Malaysian uh, flight MH17 shot down near the Ukrainian Russian border. Unbelievable. Everybody looking at it today thought, no, it can't be. They're talking about another Malaysian flight, yes. And it combines all the stories that have been in the press over the last six months. You got Ukraine, Russia. The only thing missing is Israel and Gaza. So in this case, now you've got a Malaysian flight that's a 777 in this case. And you can see a plane like this. Uh, and it was going from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, uh, and it was shot down. It appears to be by a surface-to-air missile. We're going to show you the carnage here. It's not as gruesome as some of the pictures we saw you showed you from Gaza because uh, you can't see the people, thank God. Uh, but the people who did actually see it get shot down said you could see wreckage uh, falling. You could also see people falling. Uh, so a horrible, horrible tragedy. Uh, in Ukraine. It fell on the Ukrainian side of the border. Uh, it was in a town held by pro-Russian rebels. So that's going to be very relevant to the story in a second as I explain it here. Uh, 295 people killed overall, everybody on board. 280 members of uh, the flight, eight passengers, and then 15 members of the crew uh, were killed. Uh, like I told you, it left uh, Amsterdam at 10.30 a.m. and was traveling to Kuala Lumpur and lost contact at 1.20 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, Malaysia Airlines MH17 um, was shot down. It came down at 25 miles from the Russian border, according to Reuters. Uh, the scene of fighting between Ukrainian troops and pro-Russian rebels. Uh, they say in the press that uh, Russia now has the black box. Gives you a sense of who's in control in the area where the plane was shot down. Now, the pro-Russian rebels have made some really weak allegations that it was the Ukrainians who shot it down. When asked for evidence or facts, they literally gave none. And if the Ukrainians had shot it down in an area they controlled, perhaps they would have the black box. But they don't. The Russians have the black box. Now, whether you can trust what they're going to do with that is a separate question. Now, more reports from on the ground. Noah Snyder was a freelance journalist there. He says, locals say everything exploded in the air, fell in pieces, both bodies and plane itself. People thought they were being bombed. John Ostrover was also there, breaking from the Wall Street Journal at the time. U.S. intelligence has confirmed surface air missile fired at MH17. Uh, so, yes, and now there's confirmation in every conceivable form surface to air missile shot down the plane. So it's not a mystery, that is what happened. Who shot that missile is a bit of a mystery. I think it's fairly solved given the evidence I'm about to show you. Now, uh, more from Reuters. Pro-Russian separatists could agree to a two to three day truce in eastern Ukraine to allow recovery work at the site of the downed Malaysian airliner. So obviously, again, it's in pro-Russian separatist territory that the plane was shot down. Now, the plane was flying at 33,000 feet. Uh, it turns out that uh, a Buk launcher that, the, that launches Buk missiles can fire up to an altitude of 72,000 feet. So yes, clearly within range of these missiles. Uh, here's a picture of the Buk launchers and, uh, and apparently, according to reports, the pro-Russian rebels have them. Now we know for a fact that the Ukrainians have them and the Russians have them. The question is, did the Russians give it to the pro-Russian forces? So let's go to the rest of the reports here to suss that out. So Associated Press, a launcher similar to the Buk missile system was seen by the Associated Press journalist earlier Thursday near the eastern Ukrainian town of Shnizne, which is held by the rebels. So there's a report, uh, pro-Russian rebels seen with Buk launchers. Okay, that's significant evidence, number one. Number two, on Wednesday evening, a Ukrainian fighter jet was shot down by an air-to-air -air missile from a Russian plane, Ukrainian authorities said on Thursday. Now, they've got no incentive to say our own plane was shot down uh, because that doesn't really make them look great, right? Uh, and no one has disputed that that happened. So we've now got the Russians firing not just Russian rebels, pro-Russian rebels, but actual Russian fighters, because rebels do not have planes, right? The Russian army has planes, air-to-air -air missiles shooting down a Ukrainian jet. More, pro-Russia rebels, meanwhile, claimed responsibility for strikes Wednesday. That's a day before the plane goes down on two Ukrainian Sukhoi 25 jets. So they are striking at jets, the pro-Russian forces are, the day before. They and a plane gets hit 
obviously a passenger plane, Malaysian plane, uh, today. Further evidence, the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said the second jet was hit by a portable surface-to-air missile. So now we have almost all the pieces in place. It appears that the pro-Russian rebels do have uh, book launchers. Uh, they have shot at Ukrainian jets from surface-to-air missiles. They claim that they hit a couple yesterday. We also had a Ukrainian jet shot down by an air-to-air -air missile from a Russian plane. So. This is not looking good for the pro-Russian forces. Uh, it does appear to be leaning in their direction as to culpability. A uh, couple more quotes here. Associated Press says, earlier this week, Ukraine said a military transport plane was shot down Monday over eastern Ukraine by a missile fired from Russian territory. So that goes to Russian culpability as well. It's one thing if the pro-Russian rebels fired their own rinky-dink missiles that they had, and which they do, which by the way, go up to about 5,000 feet or so and could not have hit the Malaysian uh, plane, right? But it's another thing if the Russians gave them the book launchers, which could reach the passenger plane. The Russians are also firing air to air missiles and they're also firing missiles from their own territory. Well, then you have significant Russian culpability. And uh, Putin talked to President Obama today. Of course, the Russians denied. Uh, to no end, except that Putin did say this. This is a very interesting, again from Reuters, breaking. Putin says airplane disaster would not have happened if Kiev had not renewed military operation against rebels in eastern Ukraine. I think that'll do it. It's the Russians. So Putin is not going to say, oh, if the Ukrainians hadn't started the hostilities in the first place, nobody would have shot down the plane. If the Ukrainians had shot down the plane, he would have said, the Ukrainians shot it down. The Ukrainians should have got the terrorists in Ukraine that usurped authority from our lovely ally. I can't believe the Ukrainians shot down the plane. He didn't say that. He said the plane got shot down because of hostilities that the Ukrainians started in the first place. And that means we shot it down. Okay. Now, we again, there is a loose term because there's pro-Russian rebels and the Russian government seems to have helped them significantly. And it's unclear who actually fired the missile. At the very least, it appears to be pro-Russian rebels. I think the best Russia could do now is to say, those crazy rebels, man, I don't know anything about that, man. I, I didn't give that to them, and I don't know why they did that. I didn't have anything to do with it. Now, whether that's true or untrue is, will be very hard to determine. But uh, it appears that uh, it is not the Ukrainian side, it is the Russian side that has shot down this plane. More information will come in, and I know especially in the first 24 hours, you shouldn't make absolute uh, declarations, and uh, there's always a little bit of a cloud in the first 24 hours, and some of the facts get twisted, and then they get solidified as we go along. So withhold complete judgment on that, even though I just gaveled it, by the way. <laughs> okay, but right now it looks really, really devastating for the Russian side.